from Kennedy Space Center. It is Thursday, May 19th. It's about 11.30 and <laughs> like I have a watch on. And there is a rocket launch today and we're gonna see how much we can get done in the park. Or we're gonna see how much we can get done here at the Space Center before it's time to go over to Banana Creek to see the launch. So let's go see what we can do. And it's not funded by taxpayer dollars. It weighs 5,000 pounds here, 2,000 pounds on Mars. Calendrelli, and today you'll be following me behind the gates on this exclusive bus tour of Kennedy Space Center. Our journey will take us past active facilities and end at the visitor complex's own Apollo Saturn V Center. But before we begin this journey, just like every NASA mission, our number one goal is to return home safely. So only stay seated while the bus is in motion. Please, no food or drinks on the bus with the exception of water. Please keep conversation to a minimum so others may hear and enjoy the tour. No photography is permitted at the security gates, but there will be plenty of photo opportunities during the tour. A chimpanzee was successfully launched and recovered on January 31st, 1961. Just months later, on May 5th, astronaut Alan Shepard launched on a Mercury Redstone rocket becoming the first American in space. I'm Janet Petro, and welcome to NASA's John F. Kennedy Space Center, where NASA astronauts have ventured forth on flights of exploration since the 1960s. And what an exciting time to visit our multi-user spaceport. Through our commercial crew program, we are sending astronauts to the International Space Station from American soil for the first time since the space shuttle program ended in 2011. We're continuing to launch new research experiments and supplies to the space station with our commercial resupply services and launching the most technologically advanced scientific instruments to date into space through our launch services program. This all culminates in our ultimate mission, the Artemis program, where NASA will return to the moon, this time with the first woman and first person of color, and continue on to Mars. In all our history, there's been one common theme woven throughout our DNA. It's our insatiable desire to explore beyond our home planet in our never-ending quest to expand our knowledge of the universe. As you venture behind the gates, you'll find a community of the most talented, dedicated, motivated workforce anywhere in the world who believe in the unlimited potential of space exploration. This is an active spaceport where new things are happening every day. You never know what you might see, so enjoy your tour. You are now approaching the Vehicle Assembly Building, or as NASA calls it, the VAB. It is one of the largest buildings in the world by volume, and is the place where NASA completes the final assembly of its rockets before launch. The sheer scale of this building is hard to grasp, even when you're right next to it. Do you ever feel really small when you think about space? What about when you're standing next to a skyscraper or a really big bridge? Well, I feel about as small as an ant right now. I'm standing inside the vehicle assembly building trying to grasp how large it really is in here. It has four bays. Each bay has two 
large horizontal doors below it and seven smaller vertically opening doors above it, tall enough to fit the world's largest rocket through. In fact, these are the largest doors in the world. It was built in the 1960s for the Apollo program. Every Saturn V rocket that sent humans to the moon was assembled right here. Every space shuttle mission also assembled within these same walls. After the space shuttle program, a major renovation to the inside of this building began to accommodate NASA's next generation of rockets, the Space Launch System, or SLS. Lockheed Martin has developed a capsule called Orion that will sit atop the SLS rocket. This capsule is designed to facilitate human exploration of the moon and eventually Mars. The first flown Orion capsule from Exploration Flight Test 1, EFT-1, sits inside the NASA Now exhibit at the Visitor Complex. This is NASA for human spaceflight, including the famous Apollo 11 missions. Weighing thousands of pounds and about the size of a king-size bed, the eagles continue to return to this nest to raise their eaglets year after year. The eagles arrive to nest in late August, hatch their eaglets around December, and remain there until they migrate north again in the spring. After all these years, it may not be surprising that the tree containing the nest has been damaged by natural forces, impacted by wildfires, hurricanes, wind-borne salt spray, and even a pine bark beetle attack, the tree's overall health has declined. Eagles are very resilient, and all signs indicate that in the event our resident eagles leave the tree, they'll usually rebuild to the next closest optimal nesting spot. And there are plenty of options for them here at the Kennedy Space Center. Space. Every week on TV, I watched my heroes jump into their rocket ships and took to the sky. And I wanted to be like them. They had courage, imagination, and no problem ever stood in their way for long. And over the end, when we actually did send men into space, it turned out that those were exactly the qualities it took. further behind. Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first man into space, circling the world in just 89 minutes. We had our own astronauts, and they were eager and ready to take the big ride. But our manned space program couldn't seem to get off the ground. We stuck with it, and on May 5th, 1961, things finally started going right. Astronaut Alan Shepard took his ship free and seven, six and a half miles into space. Now America had its first space here. Just a few days later, our space program received a new challenge. But this one did not come from the Soviet Union. It came from our young president. In one inspiring moment, he changed the mission. From one based in fear of the present to one of hope for the future. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. design a rocket the size of a 36-story office building, put it together with the precision of a microscope, and accelerate it to the speed of a bullet. Then, we would have to guide it to a moving target 250,000 miles away. Did you ever want to be an astronaut? 
Maybe it was the cool spacesuits, or the idea of floating in microgravity. Whatever the reason, it takes dreamers, thinkers, and adventurers to push the boundaries of human space exploration. But no matter how far we explore beyond our world, the journey ultimately starts right here, in the imagination of our youth. It is so important to support STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, focused education curricula to foster that next generation of rocket scientists, physicists, chemists, and of course, astronauts. These four building blocks form the foundation of the incredible achievements of NASA. from Apollo 15 in 1971. This is the Apollo 14 capsule. What's this? Okay, so this room actually has a lot of artifacts from the Apollo missions, including lunar samples that we're taking that were taken. So make sure that you guys don't miss the treasure room because it's got a lot of cool artifacts in it. Okay, so there is a restaurant here at the Apollo Center called Moon Rock Cafe, but we're not gonna actually be able to go over there and show it to you and show you the menu because there's so many people over there. But we did wanna let you know that it is available when you do take the bus tour over to the Apollo Center. Redline monitor. Go. Quality. Go. Top safety manager. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Vehicle system engineer. Go. Anomaly chief. Go. Range coordinator. Clear to proceed. Flight director. <laughs> Houston flight is go. Yeah, launch director. You have permission to launch. Woo! There you go. Woo! 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 Support range yeah. status. Range green. Range is green. That means we are cleared for TLP started a launch. Live the space force. Thirty seconds. Forty. T minus forty seconds. Atlas propellant tanks at flight pressure. Standing by for the final pre-launch status check. Thirty. Centaur at flight press. Watch the pad tank. We're down to 10 seconds here. You can do the count as you want. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Watch the pad. Watch the pad. T minus 10 seconds. There it goes. Atlas 5 going. Starliner on its way. I know, I know. Look, look, look at the rocket. Look, look at it's going to go a little bit to the left, just so you know. And it's got to be at an angle to uh, catch up to the space station. Here comes the rumble. Don't be alarmed. Okay, it's not going to hurt you. You have got to close with control. 1.6 million pounds of thrust. Here you go. The RD 180 is now throttling down to maintain acceptable dynamic pressure limits on the vehicle. All systems continue to look good. The vehicle is now 
passing through max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Yep, max Q, that was about 45 seconds. Plus right now, seconds. it is going to supersonic. 65 Four seconds. Miles altitude, one Sound mile barrier. Distance. About 800 miles an hour. Go a little bit to the left, northeast as it climbs out. Now supersonic. Yardy 180 is now beginning to throttle up. You may see the solid rocket boosters come off. They come off at about two and a half minutes after launch. So look at the clock. You'll see two over there. That's the equal attitude rate for all controls. Clock now. In the red, burnout of the twin solid rocket boosters. They're going to be pretty high up though. had SRV burnout, and the RD-180 has throttled back up to full, full thrust, and your response looks good. Alright, we, we wanted to note that it took about two hours to get from the launch site back over here to the main part of the space center where the parking's at because there's so many people so keep that in mind if you come out here for a launch and also keep in mind that launch days are crazy 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 busy so if you want to experience the everything that the space center has to offer make sure that you're here at opening yes very much Free sunscreen yeah don't forget sunscreen we saw so many people sunburn and there's not a whole lot of shade here and uh bring your uh reusable water bottle yeah there are refillable uh water fountains bottle there's bottle fillers at some of the water fountains so make sure that you stay hydrated because it is hot out here it is florida yes. it was like 95 degrees today the humidity the level is crazy we can't wait to get back to the room and take a shower all right that's going to conclude our trip out to nasa the kennedy space center to see a rocket launch um we didn't get to record a whole lot today. It was crazy. They said there were over 7,000 people here. Over 3,000 people were at the rocket launch area. I'm pretty sure that's what you said. Four. I think you said 3,000. He said max capacity is 4,000. And they were sold out. Yeah. Um, let us know in the comments if that's the spot you would like to watch a rocket launch from. I think it was $20 a piece. Plus, you have to have admission to the Kennedy Space Center. Mm -hmm. But we had a great day, and when we get a chance, we're gonna come back out here and do a full Kennedy Space Center tour because we're now pass holders. We'll be back several times. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.